Uh, hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and this is episode 16 and I'm just going to call this episode um, Cormac ZX7045 milling machine build and I'm, I'll do that deliberately just so that it might help anybody else who is either looking to buy one of these things or um, needs some reference material so um, that will be the name of the episode and we'll start that off with um, the build of the base so um, I showed the units, the various different bits of the base um, in the previous video um, and the bolts that I've ordered have now arrived today um, so we've got the gloves back on because they've not been in quarantine for long enough in this strange world that we all live in these days so um, I shall uh, I shall crack on with building the base now and then I shall tag on to that the, the startings of the sort of breakdown and, and lifts and clean up of the actual mill body itself uh, when I get my um, my uh, engine hoist when that arrives which will probably be hopefully by the weekend um, so I'll, I'm going to keep this episode a bit shorter now what I'm noticing is with my videos you know, we started off at sort of five, six minutes and gradually worked my way up to 50 minutes. Um, and I, I know as a YouTube viewer myself, 50 minutes is a long time. Um, so I think that's probably too long. So I'm going to try and keep the videos to a, a, a more reasonable sort of 20 minute time frame. I think that's, that's going to be better. So I'll crack on with the base for now. And this is going to be split over a few episodes as we get into the build, clean up and set up of the mill. So I'll bring you back when we're uh, when we're ready to get started putting the, the base together. The, um, that's the base built. Uh, this is just sat loosely on top for now. This doesn't. This obviously gets clamped in place with the bolts that go through from the mill body itself into the base unit. There's some captive, captive nuts underneath welded on. Um, it's got a a little door and a shelf in there. Bit of a shame really that the shelf's only this wide and the base is quite big. So I think in future what I might do is look to extend that shelf so that you can make full use of the, the cabinet space in there otherwise it's just a bit of dead space really. Um, so we'll see if we do something with that in the future. But for now um, at least that's the base built. It measures up okay corner to corner so it's fairly square. Um, and I would imagine when we get the weight of the mill on top it will be fairly flat. Um, this floor is not the best in here. Um, I don't really have a flat surface anyway. Really, it's flat, but it's got a run on it. So um, we'll see. We'll see how it all builds. Something that is a bit of a concern, and I won't know until I get my lifting gear. This tray that the mill sits on. Um, I can see all of that in shot there, pretty much. So you've got the four main holes for the for the studding to come through. Um, and there's one hole at the back that's recessed in the opposite direction there and I would imagine that's for like a coolant drain or something to go back to a, a coolant tank um, which is useful um, should I decide I'm going to put coolant on but what I don't know whether the camera shows this or not I'll try and tip this up um, the actual these holes here uh, uh, they've got a lip on them um, that's quite substantial it probably stands about five millimeters proud of the of the main base surface so I'm hoping that when I get the 
the, the mill base actually lifted up and you can see underneath it that the mill base itself is recessed to take these this lift to this raised area uh, otherwise the whole weight of the mill is going to be sat on these four tiny uh, sort of pressed steel diameters here which just seems a bit crazy so I'm hoping that underneath the base of the mill there's some big holes to uh, to accept these uh, these raised portions so then the, the whole weight of the mill is spread across the entire base unit but we won't know until I've got my lifting gear so so that's good that's the first step done um, and I'll bring you back when the lifting gear has arrived and we've started to uh, disassemble the mill Alright guys well while I'm waiting for the lifting gear to turn up I thought I'd just do a bit of preparatory work and I'm just looking into the whole drawbar thing um, looking at purchasing to see what you know to, not to purchase everything but just to have a look what's available in the Moore's Taper 4 um, range really in terms of ER32 holders and things like that and I've come across a bit of a problem um, before I get into that a couple of things first thing um, where are we there we go so um, <laughs> no it's that side um, John's workshop that was a bit of a catastrophe so I thought you, the, the observant amongst you will have noticed that um, I've only really got two grubby t-shirts and two grubby jumpers well actually one grubby jumper that I wear in here all the time a bit like a skip I can't walk past it without looking in it well I can't walk past a machine or anything else in here without getting absolutely filthy and that's just that's just workshops so I did purchase some clothing um, and I thought you know why not you know I don't I, I don't spend money on clothes typically the smartest I am is when I go to work normally so I thought we'll get pay a little bit extra it's five pound extra to get some prints put on on some you know reasonable quality tops and stuff so I got four sweatshirts like this two grey two blue and, um, and a polo shirt and I got them from a company called Workwear Express and originally I wanted them embroidered and uh, most of this really is my own fault I, I uploaded the image that you've just seen which is the image that's on my channel banner it's over there again there it is um, I uploaded that you know <clears throat> stupidly thinking that they'd be able to embroider it and they got back to me and said no it's too complicated we can't embroider that and thinking about it that makes sense so they said well we can print it for you so I said yeah okay let's go for the printing option um, the grey ones have had one wash or one of the grey ones has had one wash at 30 degrees and it's all but disappeared so the printing's all come off so and to be fair to Workwear Express I got back onto them and said you know look, that's not really you know, I obviously realise that printing doesn't have the longevity that embroidery does but I'm sure one wash isn't really acceptable and they agreed and to be fair to them they've refunded me the, the printing price so the, the tops themselves are, are, are decent I'm going to keep them for the shop um, and what I'll do at some point if I did want some more proper workwear with, with the workshop name on it which it's not necessary but it's a nice to have um, I'll maybe do another graphic for that anyway that's one thing so um, secondly so getting back to the machine so what I've done is I've cleaned the the, the column rail uh, completely took all the grease and dust and everything off it given it a good oil and I've put the um, the handle on and I've wound the basically the mill up to its full extent one thing that's really impressive is just the the capacity this thing's got which is part of the reason I bought it you can see there it's, it's absolutely huge for a small mill it's got a massive capacity on it and that again that was one of the things that um, attracted me to it and again the same with the quill um, if I, if, well the quill rather than me wind it all down there's 130 millimeters of travel on the quill so it's got a, a you know decent quill length on it um, so I'm getting into the drawbar stuff and, and I've just got my vernier out and I measured this bore that goes through the middle and whilst I made an, uh, uh, an assumption that that was a 16mm bore it's actually not, it's about 14.3 and having looked online at all of the Moore's Taper 4 stuff all the Moore's Taper 4 stuff is M16 so I'm 
scratching my head now because I've got a real problem. I can't get anything Moore's Taper for with an M12 in it. I don't really fancy trying to sleeve and bush all of my Moore's Taper stuff because A, it's it's not difficult but it's not it's not perfect and, and, and B, it's a lot of work. So I'd rather try and fix the root cause of the problem. There's two ways I can do that. I can either strip the head down completely, which I don't really fancy doing, extract this this unit, put it up in the lathe and try and line bore it to get a 16mm bore through the middle. There's enough stock on to do it, but that's a that's a big job. So I've been having a think about it and I've been taking some measurements and I'm just going to move to the whiteboard now and I've done a, a rough sketch and I'll show you what I'm thinking. Um, I think this is going to work, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and what it will do, it will provide a, a first real what I should call decent project to do in here um, for the lathe um, to make a drawbar um, to suit the mill so that I can get M16 Morse Taper 4 stuff so uh, it, it will be right on the capacity of my lathe it's going to need me to put the travelling steady up and things like that to, to do it so it will make a decent project so it's, uh, you know, two, two things really it's a good project to do and it, it's going to give me much more versatility on the mill I'll just whip you to the whiteboard and we'll have a quick look at what I'm uh, what I'm thinking about. Right, so here's the drawbar that came with the machine. Um, it's a, it's got an M14 thread on this end. It's relieved down to probably 12, 12 and a half mil, something like that, all the way up. And then at this end, it's just got a nut that's been welded on, quite crudely, but it, I guess it does the job. Um, so, so that's the existing drawbar. I can't imagine that this is anything very special in terms of material. It's probably just, you know, cheapish mild steel uh, at best. So, and I might be wrong on that. It, they might have used high tensile stuff or something, but I doubt it. Um, so that's that's what that's what comes today. There's about thirty. I've got the vernier here. There's about. Thirty. Oh no, sorry. About forty millimeters of thread on that end. Um, the whole thing is about four hundred and sixty millimeters long from end to end. What I've done is I've stuck it in the spindle, and I've just used this for now, which is the face mill that came with it. And I've pushed the basically pushed the face mill up into the bottom of the taper, and at the top I've measured the gap between the underside of the nut here and the top of the spindle, and it's about twenty five millimeters. So there's 25 millimetres of thread engagement at, at the bottom. So based on that, I've come up with a design that I think is going to work, which is on the whiteboard there. I'll just try and zoom in a bit for you. So what I'm planning on doing is buying some M16, sorry, some 16 millimetre bar, apologies, um, I'll also need to purchase uh, a 16mm tap, which will be useful anyway if I need to convert anything else, and a 16mm die, because I can't screw cut on the lathe yet, because I've got gears that have got teeth missing at the back, so screw cutting is not an option at the moment. So we'll buy some 16mm steel, and I'm thinking ENA, EN16, something of that nature, something that's a bit higher quality than just standard uh, mild steel, you know, sort of medium carbon steel, something with a bit of toughness to it. And putting this in the lathe will grip on this bottom section as, as it's just stock at 16mm. We'll turn all of this rest of the section down to the 14mm so it's just clear on the bore, which is 14.3. Um, and we'll put an M14 thread on with about 25mm of thread on the back. And then at this end, then all I'll need is just two nuts on that back end and just lock them together to, to act as a lock, you know, two lock nuts. Um, and that will be, you know, no different to what this is. In fact, it will probably be better because there'll be a slightly bigger bearing surface underneath on the top of the spindle. Um, and then at this end, then once I've turned all of that down and relieved it and put the thread on, at this end, then we'll, we'll whip it round and we'll stick the M16 thread on on the front end using a, a brand new die. So it should, you know, should get a decent thread. Um, and the only difference, of course, it means is I've got to load the drawbar in rather than being able to take it in and out the top. I just load the drawbar in from the bottom, stick the two nuts on the top, lock them up together, and then the drawbar's you know, in place at that point. 
shouldn't you know it's free to move up and down in the spindle column um, but that, I, I think that'll work and I think that will give me the versatility then to be able to buy the stuff from uh, you know anywhere that's got the all the M16 stuff in the back of the most over four so that's the plan um, I think it's going to work I've, t I've taken quite a few measurements I think there's enough clearance in the bottom of the spindle to allow this 16 millimeter diameter at the base um, at the back of the Morse taper so I think that's going to work I'm, n I'm never really going to know until I've made it and tried it what I have done is found a bit of bar that's just over 14 millimeters just as an off cut that I've got and I've managed to feed that all the way through the spindle from top to bottom and that goes all the way through so I do know that that's a parallel bore right the way through so um, so that's good um, so that's just a, a project that I've got for the lathe and like I said it, it is going to use the full sort of capacity of my lathe from tailstock to headstock really and it, it probably don't need the travelling steady if I'm honest um, because the surface finish of that 14mm bit in the middle really is unimportant largely because it's, it's all in clearance but I've got a travelling steady, why not use it, you know, it'll be an interesting setup. I've never used it before on this lathe so it'll be interesting to set it up and it might help somebody else who's got a similar type of job to show them uh, how a travelling steady works, so, and I think that'll make an interesting project. Okay, so I don't know when I'm going to do that, I've not ordered the material yet so it certainly won't be part of this video, but I just thought I'd show you the thinking that I'm doing while I'm waiting for the lifting gear to turn up so that I can start positioning the mill. And just to show you what I'm talking about guys, here's the existing drawbar at, at full length. I've, I've wound my tailstock back as far as it will go, in fact it's hanging off the, slightly hanging off the edge of the, the, the bed there. I've put my revolving centre in and if I stick this in there, you know, you can see that's flush with the chuck. Now I don't need all of that because I'm going to be gripping on the 25mm uh, threaded section that's going to become the M16 thread. So. I have got another 25mm of um, play in there which means I can get, which is about 25mm that that's hanging over the back of the head, the, the tailstock off the back of the bed there so it is going to be at full full capacity of the lane so it'll be an interesting uh, interesting project. So I've never done any long turning on this lathe to be honest, all the turning I've done has just been bits and bobs of short stuff so it'll be also interesting, it'll be a good test of how parallel the lathe turns just using the tailstock obviously I'm not going to turn it between centres I don't think it warrants that level of uh, complexity so I'll just turn it gripped in the chuck at one end and then the tailstock but it'll give me a good indication of uh, how well or how badly this lathe is over its full over its full travel so I've just as I was I've had this out obviously for the drawbar measurements um, <laughs> this funny looking thing that, that's called a face mill um, <clears throat> unfortunately our Asian cousins, um, whilst they've copied nuclear reactors and things like that, they've not yet copied the file, or if they have, no one's told them what it's for or how to use it. So I've been all over this and just taken it, every time I touched it I was just, not cutting my fingers, but it, it would have quite easily done so. But yeah, on closer inspection it's just, you know, looks like two bits of bar that have just been roughly chopped off and stuck in as keys at, at the bottom uh, yeah I, I don't know if I'm really stuck and in a tight spot and need something I might use it but uh, it's not we'll see we'll see how it runs I, I, I'm, I'm just based on the quality of how it looks I'm, I don't hold out a lot of hope for this thing to be honest but I just thought I'd uh, show you that it's, uh, it's, it's made me smile looking at it but, uh, it's I've, I've taken all the lumps and bumps and sharp edges off it at least now so I'll pop that back away and then when we get the mill up and running I am going to stick it in the chuck and just do, well in the spindle sorry, and just do some run out checks on it and um, probably have another smile at that point as well um, and when we'll, have a, we'll probably take a small cut with it and just see how it performs. So a hand out guys, apologies for that. Um, I'm just uh, starting to take things apart as you always do when you buy something new um, basically I've um, I've cleaned all that spindle area up now so that's much better it's had a nice light oil over it um, 
So that's good. That's got rid of all that horrible red, nasty grease stuff that there was all over it. I've just taken the, the kind of the bellows uh, guarding off the column um, with the with, yeah with the intention of cleaning the the column slideways and getting all the rubbish off and and giving them a again a light oil and to get access to the um, to the um, lead screw which you can just see in there and as I suspected if you look at the very bottom of the lead screw where the lead nut hasn't been yet you'll see that the bottom five or six threads there and inside the casting so there's a, a dirty finger that's not got anything on it yet if I just put my hand in there there's my finger there casting sand the whole thing's full of casting sand in there which means if I look at that um, apologies I'm struggling keeping this camera level if you look at the lead screw there the bottom four or five threads where the lead nut hasn't been and cleaned that out means that that whole lead screw in there was probably just installed covered in casting sand unless it's vibrated off from inside and dropped down but either way um, I don't think casting sand on a lead screw and in a lead nut is is really uh, is really good for the longevity of the machine um, so that needs some attention before I move anything anywhere else and what I suspect is if that's what that lead screw looks like I'm fairly certain that the other lead screws will be in a similar state um, so yeah there's a bit more work to do to this but I expected that you know as I keep saying it's a kit of parts it's going to need a bit of work um, I'm kind of glad that I've started taking it to pieces actually now I've seen that it, it, it is going to need a, a full strip down and a look at there's there's no point whatsoever in uh, setting off with a machine that's got casting sand everywhere that's just uh, a recipe for a, a worn out machine very very quickly so yeah a bit disappointing uh, you know for, for the length of time it takes to clean that out before you assemble it um, yeah that's uh, that's pretty poor I, I suspect this this whole thing is an Asian import I'm, I'm, I'm almost convinced now that Cormac are just rebranding it I think they're just the Warco of Poland uh, looking at this so again if you look at the red painting that's been done here you know it looks nice on the pictures but you can see it's all dripped off and just not very good and also while we're talking about painting if I come to the end here on the um, on the x-axis my camera doesn't focus there's an oiling point there uh, and that's just been painted over so there's, pa there's paint all over the oil over the ball so that's going to need some attention um, so just generally you know it's just it's definitely of the Asian uh, import it's got that look all over it um, I'm almost convinced that's what it is now so you know, it's not a problem, it's it's kind of what I half expected if I'm honest um, and again I need to keep it in perspective of what I've paid for it um, you know um, I have rotated the spindle now um, and, and that seems okay but again it's how far do I go you know do I strip the do I strip this top section off the gearbox and the motor off and get inside the gearbox I suspect that's probably full of casting sand as well so you know that's not good is it um, what else have I found as I've been um, sort of pulling this thing apart I thought there was something else I was going to show you I, I don't know at this point I'll leave it at that I'm, I'm, I'm just working my way around it while I've got some time before the lifting gear turns up so the next thing I'm going to do is clean you can see all the red stuff still on the y-axis I don't know how much of that I want to clean off and I don't know how much I want to start moving these axes around based on what I've just discovered um, in terms of that casting sand. I think I think the next thing will be clean it, take the, take the x-axis table off completely so that I can get to the, lead, the full lead screw and the lead nut and clean all of that out um, before I reassemble it. And once I've got that off, then do the same thing with the y-axis 
we'll take that off completely clean the lead screw lead nut check the finish of all the slideways make sure there's no burrs and you know now now i know what i'm dealing with i think the whole thing needs um a complete strip down and a proper a proper build um just just to be confident then that it's as good as it can be um based on the the, the machining that's been done on it to to obviously i can't do anything about that to influence that but uh, what i can do is clean all the crap out of everywhere else that they've left in so as much as all of, you know like any new toy all you want to do is plug it in and start using it um i think the best thing to do here to protect the longevity of the machine is to add, absolutely take it to pieces and and that's going to help me with the the lifting and everything else you know the smaller bits it's in the easier it's going to be to deal with um that was the other thing i was going to mention the um I've taken the guard off. Oh, here comes some more rain. Welcome to Scotland. I've taken the guard off, um, so I'll need to do something with that wiring. Okay, I'll leave it at that. It's obviously, uh, it's obviously getting very noisy. I'll bring you back in a bit. All right, guys. A couple of hours, well, an hour or so. Sorry, hard work, um, and that's significantly better. So we've had the shop back in there. We've cleaned out all the casting sand. We've had a rag in there, and we've cleaned out. From the from the casting itself all the casting sand so all the castings clean in there now we've cleaned all of the um the lead screw completely all the way around in all the threads over its full length greased it up properly with some proper grease and uh, i've run it up and down two or three times cleaned all the grease off re-greased it done the same thing again just to try and flush out any casting sand that might have been in the the lead nut um, so that's all. I'm, I'm fairly happy with that now. That's 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 good. That's nice and clean. In terms of the slideways, I've cleaned all the the muck off them. I've um, taken where there was bits of grey paint on the on the edges. I've just taken all of that off uh, on both sides. So that's both both of those slideways now as good as they're going to be without remachining them or scraping them or doing anything else to them. So. And that, that runs up and down there okay now. So that's one slide out of three done. Um, two to go. So I think the next one I shall strip down will be the x-axis. So we'll get that off. We'll get it upside down. Give it a good clean up. Same thing. Get rid of any mess and muck and casting sand and whatever. Um, we'll clean the, the oilers. We'll take any excess paint off. And uh, we'll give it a good... A good grease up, a good clean and a good grease, reassemble it all and then I think I'll probably wait to reassemble it actually until I've done all the lifts. So once I've cleaned it I'll just leave that, I'll probably drag another pallet in here and just leave it set on a pallet for now out of, out of harm's way. And then once that's off I can get to the Y axis and I'll do the same thing with the Y axis as well. I'm going to strip that right off, clean it all up, same same deal. And then, uh, and then once I've got the stand sorry, the base of the mill up onto the stand and bolted in position, I'll then start reassembling the, the y-axis first followed by the x-axis and just, you know, do the same sort of, same, same treatment as I've given to the column. So it's worth it, you know, it's a few extra hours work up front, but uh, I'm, I'm waiting at the moment anyway for lifting gear, so it's worthwhile spending the time now, give it a good clean down and a good grease and oil and make sure everything's as good as it can be adjust the gibbs if they need adjusting and uh, and then when we do get to powering up um you know we, we can be straight into into testing it out without having to worry too much about doing damage because it's not been cleaned up properly guess what i broke it it's not really um i've taken so I've, I've got all of the um uh, whatever you want to call it, bellows fitted back to the column now. So I'm I'm happy with the column from a slide way and a um, lead screw lead nut perspective. That's all done. So I've just started here on the x axis. So I've removed the ball the not the ball screw the lead screw. Sorry, I wish it had ball screws. It'd be far better. I've removed the lead screw and the 
table itself <laughs> it's quite interesting you can see two sort of grey lines there where the thing's been sprayed as it's been you know in, in an assembled condition <laughs> um, <coughs> it beggars belief really but again I need to keep this in you know in context it, it, it's what I paid for the machine and what I've got and, and that's the thing so I've now got the opportunity to do what I'm doing and you know, make it as good as it can be so I'll just take you to the bench and show you the um, the lead screw that I've taken out which uh, <laughs> raised a smile or, or possibly an eyebrow I'm not sure which uh, when I took it out so I'll just uh, take you to the bench I'll just do it handheld because it's just going to be easier the way I'm working at the minute I'll just put you on a handheld and take you for a look right so we're 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 at the bench now. Um, so this is the sort of end cap from the right hand end. You've got a couple of thrust bearings in both sides of this casting. So you've got one at this side where the handle is, um, and then one at the other side, which is where the um, the table where it connects to the side of the table. Effectively, a couple of dowels holding it in position. At the very end, you've got your graduated ring and like a castellated nut there for the um, um, for the handle to um, engage with and then there's a, a roll pin that goes through that and holds that into the shaft and at the end of the shaft there you'll see there's a hole in it where that roll pin goes so if I now start scanning it's a shame my camera doesn't zoom particularly well but I'll, I'll start scanning across the thread so this is the end of the thread that's been through the lead nut so you know it's it, it looks okay. There's no real damage, but it's it's kind of oil, a bit of oil on it, and what you sort of expect to see. And then this is the portion of the thread that's not been anywhere near the lead nut <laughs> because I've not moved it since I bought it. And you can see there it's full of well casting sand mainly, um, and just various other detritus for want of a better word. I like that word. Um, so yeah, it's it you know it's just yeah, it's poor. <laughs> if if you'd have wound that as I have done the other end, I've had no choice but to get it out. If you'd have wound that in and out of the lead nut for you know three or four weeks of operation, you'd pretty much knack your lead nut up fairly quickly. They're only bronze cast, so they're not going to stand up to that for very long. Um, at this end, you've got a similar affair casting two dowels. There's no thrust bearings in this end. It's just a plain, plain bush. Um, we've got some more uh, good paintwork going on at this end. Look, you can just see there where, uh, where they've just painted the end cap, and they've just sprayed it. You know, they've sprayed these castings, and the underside where they've not sprayed particularly hard, you can still see the casting coming through. It, it, it's, it is what it is. I'm not. I, I don't need to be too critical. It's, uh, it's what I got for the money. So here's the gib strip that I took out. Um, I've not done anything with this other than drop it on the bench, um, but I I'll clean that up and we'll have a proper look at it. Um, I mean, it's a decent gib strip. It's uh, it's 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 hefty enough. It's cast and machined, so you know. Um, I think it's cast. Let me just have a look. It looks cast. I, I don't know. I'll have a look at that, but. Anyway, you can see the taper on that, you know, it's as you'd expect on a gib, it's thin at one end and thick at the other. There's an amount of, well, everything you touch, just everything is just gritty as hell. It's, there's just casting sand in everything. So, you know, if anybody else wants to buy one of these, and I don't just mean from Colmac, it's obviously an Asian import. So if you're going to buy a Warco or if you're going to buy... Uh, an Axminster or a Chester or any of these things, it, anything that's an Asian import that's just been rebadged, I would strongly suggest that you do what I'm doing now, which is strip it all down. And I know it's a bit of a game, but strip it all down, clean everything right up, and then rebuild it before you even start doing any movements on it. Um, obviously, you need to move the lead screw through the nut to extract it. You've got no choice. But that's only one visit through, and hopefully the damage is minimal. So, so that's where we are, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm cracking on with it. I'm pleased I've decided to, to do it. 
um, I was in two minds, but I'm really pleased now I've stripped it and started, you know, just generally, fit. it's just like grinding paste. The, the, yeah, it's just, it's horrible. So I'm going to give it all a good clean up um, and I'll pop back when I've got that x-axis done. I'm going to leave the table off for now. So I'll just leave this as a kit apart. So I'll clean it, oil it, store it, um, and then we'll start on the y-axis. I know you're going to think I'm crazy guys and I need my bumps feeling because that's what I'm thinking but anyway and I've I've used often used the expression kit of parts and that appears to be exactly what I've <laughs> what I've now got um so that's the y axis off um so it's it's right back down to the base casting now that took a bit of getting off because they have I don't know if you can see just here They've used a filler under the paint to sort of sm to blend the edges here. So there's a there's a big lip of filler here. I mean, all that's going to need to come off. What I'll have to try and do is get it off as um, sympathetically as I can, so that it doesn't chip too far back. But I think it will anyway. Um, what I'll try and do is get a colour match for the paint. We'll flatten that off that surface there, and uh, and then we'll just touch it up afterwards. I'm not going to refill the joint. Um, We'll just touch it back up with white um, when we're done, if I can get a match. So, um, so yeah, here's the general state. <laughs> so, um, I do. I really wish my camera would zoom. So, in here, look, we've got. Uh, I don't know. I mean, this is casting sand. Look, you can scrape. You can scrape it into big piles. Uh, it's just everywhere. The whole thing. You know, there's paint. There's just paint on the slideways and uh, yeah um, perspective <laughs> I keep thinking what I've paid perspective um, I, I, it's not I'm not I don't think I've got a bad purchase at all for the money I, I just despair that people can call themselves engineers and build stuff like this because it's just appalling it really is appalling anyway that's uh, that's enough of that. So there's the there's the carriage that holds the table, obviously. Um, and there's a there's a there's a hole here, clearance hole for a screw that goes down, and that holds the feed nut for the for the y-axis. And I'll just take you to the carnage that is the y-axis screw. Oh, hello. So it's the same deal. Um, you've got the end piece. Um, two thrust bearings same deal with a roll pin holding it all on you've then got the feed screw there you've actually got I've got the feed nut off here and all the feed nuts are slotted with a uh, with a cap screw which is good because that means as they wear which would probably be about 10 minutes if I left them in their existing state you can tighten the tighten the gap up there to take some of the backlash out should you need to um, so there's the feed screw it's exactly the same deal the bit of the feed screw that's come through the nut is oh sorry the lead screw that's come through the the nut is sort of cleaner and and sort of oily looking and then if you look at the rest of it that's not been through the nut you know i mean there's just great big clinkers of casting sand and just general filth and muck and paint and so you know be warned anybody who's going to buy one of these asian import mills this it, I would really, really highly recommend that you do what I'm doing based on what I'm seeing. So, you know, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't even need to describe it, do I? You can just see it. Um, so there's the, the gib for the Y. And, and I, again, I think all of this will clean up and make decent parts and there's adjustment on it all, so it should all go back together nicely. I, I'm going to do a thorough... Uh, going over all of these because the, the, there'll be sharp edges and things so we'll, we'll clean everything up where we can make it as good as we possibly can and then uh, we'll start the refit so that's the y-axis out um, this is the just the rubber uh, protector at the back to protect all the casting sand from being washed away you know because that's all part of the purchase I suppose so anyway there we go that's um, that's where we are so um, my, my nice shiny new milling machine is now um, is now in bits um, which will help with the lifting I guess it's it's going to make the lifting easier um, it really worries me though 
I absolutely now want to take that bit to pieces as well and see what nasties are hiding in there. I just don't know how far back to go with this. I think I'm just going to stick to the axes for now. And then once I've got it on the stand, built back together, I'm then going to take the top off that gearbox. I'll take the motor off and the top off the gearbox and I'm just going to have a look inside. I'll probably run it for a bit, drain the oil out, um, and then and then take the top off and we'll get in the inside of that and just I, I'm absolutely convinced it will have similar traits to what I've already seen so um, anyway good news we're um, we're getting closer to having a, a half decent miller machine so it's all good work it's all uh, it's not and, and to be fair it's taken me about an hour and a half to get it down to this level just working on my own um, so it's not it, it's not that time consuming really and it's probably took me an hour to sort the 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 column out in terms of getting the casting sand out and cleaning the lead screw up so yes it's work but you know even if you spent a good day doing this it, it would be a day absolutely well spent if you bought one of these import mills it, it really really would so um, I'll bring you back when uh, when I've done some more um, I, I don't know how much more I'm going to do if I'm honest now I think I'm probably going to leave it in its current state I might clean the lead screws up and I might just clean these separate units up, but I'm certainly not going to do any rebuild. I'm just going to leave it completely uh, stripped as it is. Then we'll do the lifts and we'll get get it where it needs to be on the stand. Um, and then I'll start thinking about rebuilding it um, at that point. Well, there you go, guys. Spot the difference. Ten minutes. That's all that took. It's... Uh, and the threads, the threads are in reasonable condition. The shaft's in reasonable condition. I, I, I just, that's the bit I don't get. Why would you spend <laughs> the time and effort making something as complex as that and then do that to it? <laughs> I just, anyway, go on. It's, um, I'm pleased really because it's, you know, it's, the threads are in good nick. Um, it's cleaned up well. The only other thing I've done to it is, um, again, the hole where the, where the roll pin went through was just sharp. It hadn't been deburred. So I've just put a, a countersink in there quick um, just, to, just to take the sharp edges off that. So that's the Y-axis lead screw done. I'll just give that um, a coat of oil now. And uh, that's probably going to be it for this episode. I, I think I'm going to try and keep them quite short, so I'll... I'll probably cut it at this episode and upload it um, and then we'll just carry on with the next episode uh, as I carry on you know fixing all of this um, uh, well poor workmanship is the only word for it and then uh, we'll get all of this lot cleaned up and uh, await my lifting gear so we can start building it building it up properly so um, happy days I'll uh, I'll catch you on the next episode. Rubbish. I just had to show you this, guys, before we end this episode. Um, I've done the uh, the Y-axis lead screw now. That's all cleaned up, oiled up, ready for reassembly. So that's done. And I thought just before I finish for today, I'll just have a look at the Y axis gib strip and have a look and see, you know, get all the muck off it and have a good look at it. And the good news is it's been scraped in. And I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's funny, if nothing else. I don't know if my camera's picking this up. That, that's probably the best shot. So you can see, you can see there, look, that's, uh, that's been properly scraped to fit. I think they just tied it to the back of the car and drove off down the road or something. I'm not really sure, but um, <laughs> I think that's going to need a bit of attention before we put that in. There's a bit of draw filing work needed on that. Um, the other side's not as bad. The other side's just ground, coarsely ground finish, so that side's not as bad. But but this is the side that bears onto the um, onto the actual moving part look at it <laughs> anyway um kitter parts pleased with what i've bought i just thought i'd uh, enlighten you all so we'll call that a day i think for today i'll 
try and get this episode uploaded um, tonight or tomorrow, um, and I'll uh, just keep them coming as uh, as I do more. So uh, I'll leave you with that image. That's what scraping looks like.